Bubo used to work at the PD as a coroner and pathologist. Then a couple of limbs and organs went missing, and the morphine stock suspiciously depleted, so the force said goodbye to him. He then set up a private practice, but lost his license pretty quick. Now he's doing something that vaguely resembles medicine. Fixing up gangsters and bent coppers. Or pigeons like us. I haven't seen the doc since he had to pick a dozen pellets out of my drumstick. Thanks, Marty. Well, well. Look who the cat dragged in. The one and only chicken coppers in the rotting flesh. Good evening to you too, old owl. Oh, has he shot you again? Not yet. Ha ha, it is to laugh. I just need a strong painkiller. And since we're already here, some information too. Well, then I hope your pockets are full. We just crawled out of the river. So if it's all right with you, I can pay with a pocket full of mud. Well, I owe you one anyway. One? Don't make me laugh, Bubo. You're indebted to us for the rest of your life. Okay, okay. Tell me what's wrong and do it fast. It's a busy night. On New Year's Eve, animals love to shoot or even eat each other. Ah, uh, tell me about it. Tonight's starting to remind me of the bloody New Year's Eve. Or worse. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Did you come here to cry me a river? Spit it out. Then get your wobbly waddles out of here. Ursula will be home soon. Charming as ever, old bird. Eesh, like in the cave of the vampire bat in those horror movies. You're right. I think all of these are illegal. Or worse. Occult magic. Demonology. Perverse desires. Unholy dealings. Would you two shut the cluck up? Are these for sale, old man? I was thinking about going into black magic myself. Of course. You can have them for your liver. I love chicken liver. Ugh, I just had to ask. Don't even joke about that, Marty. He's not. Ugh, I know. Nightmares of a crazy shaman. What do you think? Is this a medical illustration or the good doc's dinner? Unfortunately, the two are often one and the same. Ugh. Hey, did you draw this, doc? Very funny. Are you here to sightsee or what? We don't have anything better to do at the moment, so... I'm laughing myself to death. It's almost unbelievable that Bubo was once a real doctor. Keep the dead bodies and your stolen morphine stash here? The morphine's long gone. Oh, poor Bubo. Watch your beak, Martin. No way. I wouldn't put my foot in there for anything. This is just for decoration, right? Somehow I can't picture you playing the classics. It's Ursula's, not mine. She plays beautifully. I can imagine. Hey, shut your beak or I'm gonna sew it shut for you. All right, calm down. I can only play one song on the piano. Molly wrote it. She loved to play music. No way, I wouldn't put my foot in there for anything. Who's that? Who? Oh, he's my father. You're what? Why are you so surprised? He 
gave his body to science. Then what's he doing here? Ooh, 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 ooh. You're a hilarious guy. <laughs> that was a good one, Sonny. Yeah, thanks. Huh. Two infantile monkeys. So, this uh, skeleton, is it really your old man, Bubo? What if it is? Nothing, nothing. Just, uh, just asking. Good evening, Papa Bubo. blood i was operating on someone a few minutes ago totally sober huh more or less probably less my hands tremble if i don't drink okay just leave me alone have you considered that he may make us lie down here i'm sure as hell not gonna lay on that i'd rather bleed to death twice i'm with you there pal He's right. I'd rather bleed to death, too. You look pretty good, old man. You want a formaldehyde diet? Huh. Your humor hasn't changed. Worn and out of style. Just like you, Bubo. Sometimes I think Bubo's simply some grumpy, immortal, ancient god from the old world. With the amount of poison he's pumped into himself, he should have been dead a long time ago. Spit it out. What do you want from me? I have a busy night. Busy? I had to patch up two muscle heads a few minutes ago. Of course, they ran off and didn't pay. What muscle heads? Wait, let me guess. A ram and a bobcat. How did you know? Shit. What was their problem? Why did they come here? The bobcat's hand was badly burned and something had sliced the ram. Well, it's not an easy job to haul two unconscious roosters onto an abandoned ship and then set it on fire. What have you gotten yourselves into again, you fools? Those two work for Ibn Wessler. Yeah, don't say. Well... In this case, it was nice to know you, gentlemen. Don't celebrate in advance, Doc. As you can see, we're not so easy to kill. Just tell us everything you know, and give us some strong painkillers. Well, all right. Ask away. But I must warn you, if Ursula comes home and sees you here, she'll either kick you out or maul you to death. Looking aside, how are you, Doc? Long time no see. Oh, you should get shot more often than you'd see me more. Yeah, right. I'm on it. I'm still alive. Clawville's still standing, to my surprise. Ursula still bears with me, to my even greater surprise. What else can I say? You don't need anything else then, right? You know... I could use a big house, a normal job, and a ton of money. And it'd be great if that ridiculous King Hector would finally resign from the throne. So you still support the Separatists? Wow, this old owl's heart is beating. But your life partner is a bear. Mm, not a problem, as long as I don't marry her. You're a goddamn hypocrite, Bubo. Why, thank you. Love is still in the air, I see. I'm a prisoner, boys. <laughs> yeah, the prisoner of your stupidity. 
easy for you to say. You can't get rid of a woman like her so easily. Why? Because she's a bear and weighs a ton? No. Because no matter how much I hate her, I still love her more than anything. Oh, touching. Hold your tongue, Mick Chicken. What do you know about Madame Zavos and her affairs? Zavos, huh? Who? That woman's probably even more dangerous than Ibn Wessler himself. Oh, great news. Is there some kind of link between them? Ibn's contacts span the entire city, and his new girlfriend, that Natasha, worked in the brothel once. How do you know that? Everybody knows. Oh, great. We almost died for that information. Why didn't you ask? Shut, shut up, okay? So that Ram and his partner, did they talk about something? About their plans? Where they're going next? The Bobcat didn't say a word. He just growled. But the Ram couldn't shut up. And he talks like a butler or something. He's got a very strange vocabulary, I must say. What did they say, Bubo? Get to the point. After they've done the job killing you, I guess, they said they have to kill a rat, too. A rat, figuratively. An informer. Someone who spilled the beans and hurt Mr. Wessler's interests. An informer? They called him a sneaky little bastard, too, if that helps. That's gotta be Zip. Of course, Zip. Damn it. Well, then, that flea bag's done for. Hold your horses, Marty. Zip is like a cockroach, practically immortal. I guess. We gotta help him, then. I'm afraid you're right. We still owe him one. One? I didn't even hear that, Bubo. So, who tried to get us out of the way, and why? saw the madam's girls trying to take it apart. Furry gods. What did she do to them? Well, a couple of dames with guns are not enough to scare my dear Ursula, that's for sure. But relax. She didn't tear them to pieces. She just chased them off and got away with your car. You know, for once, that's wonderful news. Yeah, I wore my legs down to get here. Warmest regards to Ursula when she gets back, Doc. She may have saved our lives. Oh, 
Of course I will. Now, cluck off, will you? Ah, you're the best, Boobo. I know. Will you kindly get lost? What does this tell you, Boobo? That you tore off the corner of a painting. Not that. What do you make of it? That somewhere a painting is missing a corner. Don't cluck with me, old man. I'm not. I'm completely serious. Then, thanks for the help. <sighs> Don't mention it. boss yeah the boys were quite fast i admit ah what are we gonna tell them any chance we were just joyriding around here not much that's why they're gonna believe it you think so just watch and learn cub the tires boss what the hell's gotten into you Marty huh should we blow out the tires boss what the hell's gotten into you Marty huh the rain's not gonna wash that off I'm sure no it won't not for my mind anyway these two again of course who else would you be happier if it were Moses and Plato? Yeah, you're right. We're lucky. There you go. Ah, something's jabbed me in the eye. You don't say. Something's prickling my beak, too. <laughs> ah, that's a good one. Ah, something's jabbed me in the eye. Hey, boys. I see you're working hard. Hey, what about you? What the hell are you doing here? And we were just driving through when we saw the party. And who are you trying to feed that bullshit to? Yeah, we're not eating that shunny. This isn't your neighborhood. So, out with it. Why are you here? Pull back the spikes. What's going on? Just fill us in, fellas. Oh. Young girl, around 25 to 30 years old. Pretty? Some kind of doe or something? Impala, you moron. Aye, she was an Impala indeed, fellas. Wait, how do you know that, Marty? One of the officers mentioned it. Don't blow your top, okay? Carry on. We don't have all night. So, the girl was naked. There's no trace of predation. We don't even know how she died. It's the coroner's day off. Huh. Another thing that only happens in Clawville, huh? Which reminds me, what are you even doing here? We're securing the area. Yeah, I can see that. I beg your pardon, Marty. I said, have a nice time doing nothing, boys. I mean, securing. Why do you seem so guilty to me, boys? Even your combs don't look right. <laughs> You're imagining things again, Phyllis. You must have stood out in the rain for too long. You need a nice hot cup of joe. Change the subject, are we, Rooster? We're keeping an eye on you, you know. Wow, that gave me the shivers. You too, Sonny? Now that you mention it, yeah, pretty much. <sighs> Get the hell out of here. If you didn't know, this is a crime scene. Then what the clock are you doing here? Get the hell out of here. Here's the alpha pup. Hey, watch out, he may bite you. A barking dog never bites. No, Bosco's not like that. He's as happy as a dog with two tails. Ah, we're criminally funny. Yeah, in a better world, we'd be in jail for it. Bosco, here? What does this have to do with predation? Frankly, we've been working pell-mell for a while now, Sonny. 
There's simply not enough of us. So that's how it starts. What? The final collapse, Marty. I'd rather have a thousand Boscos than one blood boil. You should copyright that. I'd rather have a thousand Bosco. Sorry, guys. Crime scene. You can come in if you want, Marty. But unfortunately, Sonny counts as a civilian. It's all right, Bosco. We understand. Anyway, I don't think whatever's in there would surprise us much. What? Why'd you say that? Oh, nothing, nothing. We've just heard what's going on. It's one ugly case. Yeah, she was young and full of life. At least I think so. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm too old for this shit, you know. Well, what are you doing here anyway? I heard there wasn't any predation here. It's a simple murder case, isn't it? Yeah, it would be. But the city's too busy tonight. We simply don't have enough officers on duty to cover everything. Sound familiar? Yes, it does. So everyone's doing everything, eh? And nothing. Not what they should, anyway. But you know, I'm not even here. I just stepped in to take a look at the case for the boss. I'm already heading back to the PD. We just happen to be around here, too, so uh, we'll be on our way now. See you soon? Yeah, afraid so. Anyway, what the hell are you doing here? We were just uh, driving around in the neighborhood, uh, you know how it is, voluntarily patrolling. Furry gods, do you think I'm an idiot? All right, all right, maybe a little bird told us. We got a scoop, but we can't tell you anymore. Why do I have the feeling that you're gonna end up in deep shit tonight? Maybe we're already in it, pal. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Try not to burn down the whole city, okay? Crime busters. We can't promise anything. Try not to burn down the whole city. Looks like the party's over. Yeah, it looks like it. And just when I was starting to get into the mood. Damn it. I thought I was going to see you shake a tail feather tonight, boss. Yeah, let's not go that far. There he is again. Good old Lagrasse. You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? What? Not calling him by his real name. Lamar or Lawrence is okay. Laszlo, maybe. But Legrasse? <laughs> all right, all right, I admit it. I know that's not his name. He's Louise, right? Okay, I don't care anymore. I'm done. Louis has had quite a busy night tonight. You know, when you showed me that flyer, I didn't think you were going to drag me into a mess like this, Boss Bird. I'm going to be honest, Marty. I had a feeling if we got into this, the sky was going to fall on us. That's why I needed you. Someone who... Who can take care of you? Yeah, something like that. That's honest coming from a selfish bastard and a jerk. Thanks, boss. It all started with that innocent flyer. Life is strange, all right. I hope we're not going to be on the front page of tomorrow's paper. Well, it depends on the headline. Could be, the legendary pairs back together. Or, the two roosters take down the Wessler Empire. Or, the naked bodies of the once famous chicken police were found dead, washed up on the banks of the Times River. Eee, enough, enough, I get it. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep it real. Gee, thanks. I never want to be on the front page again. No matter what the reason. You know, sometimes I feel like none of this is real. Like we're living in a movie or something. What makes you say that? It's like our actions are scripted. Like we're doing what's expected of us instead of acting rationally. Even if it's something totally insane. Well, Marty, maybe you're right. But we're the directors and the protagonists of that movie. 
At least I hope we are. That's for sure. If we weren't, we'd be long dead. Yeah, that's true. Wow. Moving luminous advertising posters? It's crazy. Yeah, crazy, all right. Was that irony? What? Me? Never. If we were really in a movie, at least there'd be a chance of a happy ending. Hey, Lewis. Here again? I just left something here, S -S Sonny, but nothing important. Are you sure everything's all right, Lewis? You seem, uh, distracted. I'm fine, S -S -S Sonny. Don't you worry about me. What are you doing here anyway? You look quite b b battered Now we got both hot and cold tonight, literally and at the same time. But we're alive, and we're hoping maybe we can find Natasha here. I'm s -s sorry, Sonny. I, I haven't seen her since her performance. Well, thanks. Uh, keep your eyes open, all right? In my e ears. Maybe you've seen Filmar? Filmar? I last saw him a, f a few hours ago. He was pretty much out of it, <clears throat> if you know what I mean. Old hog got drenched, huh? Figuratively, and literally, too. Okay, thanks, Lewis. I have a hunch we'll meet again. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, m m m m me too. Oh, what? Clock me. I really don't need this. We don't have to talk to him. He's blind. He's not going to notice us. If only we were that lucky. But he can smell chickens from a hundred feet away. There's no getting away, right? Of course there is. Just turn around and run. There's no getting away. The Czar Club. I'm not going to forget this buzzing red neon light anytime soon. I could already smell you, boys. Ah, hello, Morty. What's up? Are you lost, old lizard? Me? <laughs> lost? <laughs> no way. If I'm not mistaken, your rickety little shack isn't this way, Morty. It's uh, miles away from here. Don't you worry about me, you overgrown eggs. I know where the road's taking me. Jeffy uh, threw you out again, huh? Don't you worry about that either, pal. <laughs> that little bastard. All right, listen, Mort. I'll talk to Lewis for you, okay? Luckily, he's right here. Don't bother because of me, sonny boy. It's nothing. I can walk. No worries. I just want your legend to live on, lizard wizard. Thanks, boys. But you really don't have to. Not one more word, Mort. Listen, uh, Lewis, uh, I need uh, some help. A, a favor. Sonny, you know, for you, anything, my friend. Five times a day, even. Okay, okay, I deserve that. So, how can I ha ha assist you again? You know old Morty, right? Uh, 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 yes, I, I know him. <clears throat> Indeed. I know he's not a saint, and he doesn't smell like flowers. His manners are disgraceful. And he drinks a lot. He's friends with weirdos. And he's in and out of jail. So we know he's not an easy character, but he has nowhere to go. And he is an old friend. Or something like that. So, he need needs a room, right? You guessed it, pal. Well, no problem, t t t gentlemen. I can handle that. Thanks, Lewis. Again. I don't know how many times. Much obliged. Don't mention it. One day I'm gonna ask you for a favor in return. Anything, Long Ears.
Hello, ladies. Not even what happened to us at the brothel and on the burning ship discouraged you, huh? On the contrary, Sonny. I haven't felt this much alive in a long, long time. All right. You have five minutes. Then we're leaving. Thanks, Dad. But I'm not going to talk to them. You know me. I only conquer from afar and only in my mind ever since Laura turned my head and my world upside down. What a lucky woman, eh? I'm the lucky one. That's for sure. Even looking at them makes me tired. they'll welcome us here? No, they won't, but I don't care. I like this new Sonny. You know, since the incident with the burning ship, I see these girls in a different light. No wonder. These demons are capable of anything. For sure, Sonny. For sure. Hey, I didn't mean it like that, okay? Be professional. Hard as stone. You're right. Wounded, tough, stone-hard cops. That's right. Killer angels of pleasure. What do you think she could be? Squirrel? Cat? Raccoon, maybe? She's just a woman, Sonny. That's all that matters. Yeah, I guess you're right. This picture... This one's really artistic for a change. I have a feeling we don't fit in here. Well, we did just crawl out of a river after escaping from a burning ship. But these furies happened to set on fire. Exactly. So that means we deserve some premium compensation. Don't even think about it. I wonder what those beautiful, sad puppy eyes have seen. Maybe it's just a statue. I swear he was blinking before. Maybe it's just a statue. Our little actress. She was good. She deceived me, too. But don't forget, Marty. These girls are capable of anything for them, madam. I wonder which one is her true personality. The gentle, sweet gal, or the murderous fury. I wonder which one is her... Hello, miss. Gentlemen, I... Uh, don't worry, miss. We're not here to arrest you. Though I admit the temptation is high. I... I just was... Uh... We know, doll. You did what the madam told you to, right? Please, don't be embarrassed. It's not your fault. Hey, Marty, you're not going to propose to her, are you? Please, gentlemen, this is very embarrassing and unpleasant for me. What do you want here? Are you tempting fate? Do you want to die? If we wanted to die, we just had to let the ship burn. You know, the one you put us into. I had nothing to do with that. It was Ibn Wessler's goons. Wessler's goons? Did they knock us out, too? No, that was us. The girls. But we had no choice. I can't tell you more. Tell us this, then. Is the madam here? Yes. But I'm sure she wouldn't want to see you. You have to understand that. We'll see about that, sweet pea. Thanks for the help. But I... Please, leave. You're not going to achieve anything here. I'm sorry, Toots. We can't do that. Not yet. Please, leave. You think this is a good idea, Sonny? We're gonna make the crocodile even more angry. Stay outside if you want, Marty. I don't care. Gee, okay. Okay, boss. I didn't say anything. The end is nigh. The dead walk among us. Uh, greetings to you too, madam. Are you surprised to see us? I must admit I am a little. But I also must admit I'm relieved. Yes. Relieved? Wasn't it you who put us on a burning ship by any chance? No, it wasn't me, Mr. Featherland. 
Though I can't deny my part in it either. How comforting. Look, Mr. Featherland, your investigation clashed with my business and my personal interests. I couldn't let it slide. That's all there is to it. Nothing more. You're expecting any other explanation in vain. You really are cold-blooded, aren't you? Not my fault. I'm a crocodile. It has nothing to do with you being a crocodile, madam. Whatever you think. So, what can I help you with, gentlemen? I don't want to go into that room again. So, the legends are true. Before you alert your wildcats, we're not here to arrest you, ma'am. We're not even here to confront you with anything. Why then? To what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? I simply want to know why. The answer is frustratingly simple, Mr. Featherland. You'll be disappointed. Try me. I have a contract with Mr. Wessler. And your investigation infringed certain terms of that contract. That's all. Contract, huh? Is Natasha the subject of this contract? You sold her to Eben Wessler, right? That assumption is offensive. So? I'm not going to answer that, Mr. Featherland. No. I knew it. You know, sister, you could be a famous crocodile. You're still just a snake. And I hope snakes will forgive me that I mentioned them in the same sentence as you. I'm truly sorry you feel that way, detective. Maybe one day your opinion will change. You know, Mr. Featherland, I was growing rather fond of you two. I'm sorry. Don't take this the wrong way, but we don't need your sympathy or your pity, Zavos. Just take care of yourselves when you finally face Mr. Wessler. He's much more dangerous than you think. I hope you understand. We're pretty skeptical about your advice, madam. Take care, gentlemen. Is that advice or a threat? I'll leave that up to you to work out. Take care, gentlemen. Is that... Look at what the wind of the sea dragged in. Our gull friend in the flesh. I can't believe it. Is this guy everywhere? The gull sees farthest to flies highest, Marty. Yeah, that guy's never given up. That's clucking sure. Let's get this over with. He's not so bad. Just have to get used to his style. You had ten years to do that. Nine, and it wasn't enough. Don't panic, Sonny. You have around five good years left, maybe six, before you fly up to the heavenly chicken coop. So you can still succeed if you try hard enough. Just shut up, Marty, please. I have to admit, I can't stand his kind. I can't help it. Hey, Sonny, how could you say that? It's not the seventh century anymore. I mean journalists, Marty, not seagulls. Uh-huh, okay. Sorry. I was afraid there for a second. Timothy, Timothy, how is it you always end up exactly where we are? Coincidence? I don't think so. Hey there, Timster. Long time no see. Hey, boys. What a lovely surprise. Do you also have a deja vu, Sonny? It's like all of this had already happened, isn't it? Yeah, now that you mention it. I wasn't following you boys, I swear. We never said you were, Timbo. But what exactly are you doing here? It's a little far away from Roachtown. Uh, uh, okay, okay, I confess. I was following you. But I simply had to know what this is all about and how it's gonna end. It's my job, after all. But you have to understand, pals. We're not your pals, Tim. And I'm telling you for the last time, get the clock off our backs, or it's gonna end up a lot different for you than you think. 
Ah, that's harsh. Even from you, Sonny. Did something happen? Did you get dragged into something personal? And on New Year's Eve again? Yeah, I mean, what's the chance of that? Bloody New Year's is back? Uh, is there a connection between the two? Uh, uh, what happens if it reappears again? Make him stop, Marty, or I'm gonna twist his beak off. Hey, uh, okay, okay, I get it. Yeah, my beak is sealed, and uh, I'm gonna keep it low. Very good. You're not so stupid after all, Tim. You must have been just pretending. <laughs> uh, that, that's a good one, Sonny. <laughs> I'd be grateful if you didn't follow us anymore, Tim. We know you're a veteran scribbler, but where we're going, I'm not sure you'd make it out alive. Uh-oh. Well, that sounds rather irresistible, Sonny. You couldn't have made it more tempting for him. Oh, shut up, both of you. Okay. Uh, okay. So long, Tim. I hope we won't meet again for a while. Yeah, the pleasure's all mine, boys. So long, Tim. I hope... The Chronicle either put the chicken police on a pedestal or it was gnawing on our drumsticks. Mostly thanks to our dear friend, Timothy Saltwater. We made it much easier to sell the paper until the public got bored. I wonder if they've got the entire chicken police... You know, since chickhood, Everything's changed around me, except... Hercule Mullen and the stand. Exactly. Mullen is eternal and unchanging. Maybe he's just an ideal, and ideals don't grow old. Or maybe he's one of the great wild ones in mortal form. We may never know, Marty. Hello, Mullen, my old friend. <laughs> the chicken, please. Hello, Hercule. Good to see you here. <laughs> I'm always here, lads. The sun shines, the rain falls, and Hercule Mullen sells newspapers. Just like that, Martin. Now listen, uh, Hercule. Wait, 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 sonny boy. Let me guess. Maybe, um, oh, you know. Ah, I got it. You need some information. <laughs> you guessed, Uncle. How did you do that? Years of practice, sonny boy. <laughs> now, tell me, lads, what's the matter? We're just sniffing around a bit, Uncle Mullen. You know us. You just can't sit still in your asses, can you? <laughs> it's all right. So, tell me, what would you like to know? Uncle Mullen helps where he can. Thanks, old pal. Was there any movement around here? I mean, in Clawville? Well, they say there was some kind of trouble at the PD because good old Malloy had drunk himself into oblivion. <laughs> the Egypt. Blood boils fuming, of course. And there was talk of a murder in the rich district. Flowerful, yeah. We already know about that, unfortunately. Well, I'm sure you know more than I do. It's a suspiciously quiet night, if you ask me. At least for a New Year's Eve. Calm before the storm. Something's brewing. I can feel it in me old beaver bones, and that signals three things perfectly every time. Bad weather, big trouble, and the wrath of me beloved wife. <laughs> Thanks, old man. We'll keep our eyes open. You do that. Tell me, lads, what do you need? Just your eternal fountain of knowledge, old beaver. What a night we're having. We even ran into Bubo. And you're still alive? <laughs> Give praise to the great wild ones, lads. <laughs> we do. What's going on with the old owl? He didn't tell us much about himself. Oh, I hear the old owl's doing quite all right, since more and more cops step outside the line and more and more gangsters shoot themselves in the foot. Busy days, huh? Ah, uh, something's coming, lads. It's in the air. And I can feel it in me beaver bones, too. Clawville's boiling. Yeah, we feel it as well, Uncle Mullen. We managed to run into Philmar, too. Good old Phil, huh? I've heard he's not been doing so well of late. 
You didn't look so good, that's for sure. At the age of the private eye is over, lads. Now animals either sue each other or turn to the local crime lords. Only jealous or betrayed housewives remain for private detectives. Phil would never admit to that. He's too much of a romantic. Are we still talking about Phil Mayer? <laughs> Listen, Hercule, what do you know about Madame Zavos? Why do I have the feeling you're not interested in her girls? Because you know us, Uncle. I hope you didn't mess with her. The old Cayman has a rather bad reputation, to put it mildly. <clears throat> Crocodile. But you're right. We shouldn't have messed with the old gal. She set fire to a ship with us in it. Ho, <laughs> boys. I've heard she loves drama, but that is a whole other level. Yeah, right. We barely got out alive. What else should I tell you about her, then? Maybe try not to anger her, if that's possible. <laughs> Thanks. Good advice. <laughs> I see everything's like it used to be. <laughs> yeah, if only my back was the same. <laughs> You're telling me. What the hell is Tim doing here? Uh, you're still angry at him, then. He's not really a bad fowler, and he simply idolizes you. Be gentle with him. It's not adoration. It's an obsession. And I can't bear obsessive people. Then how exactly can you bear Martin? Hey, old man. The exception that proves the rule, right? If I'm obsessed, then what are you, boss bird? No, that's different. I have no other choice but to be with myself. The toughest prison on the planet, right? <laughs> Get a room, you two. Tell me, lads, what do you need? see him anywhere but that jerks here yeah the famous scribbler Tim in the flesh he must have seen something and because he's here he must have caught a whiff of a serious case we should interrogate him oh let me be the bad cop boss bird permission granted yes that's the cobbler district over there or cockroach town or the hive as others call it. It was a nice, normal place when I moved to Clawville. Now it's an insect ghetto. Ah, is that the Kite and Blues? I think so. It has a unique sound. Hey, old pal. Could you help us? Does he understand us? I don't know. Uh, excuse me. Have you seen where the raccoon went? The one who owns the joint? Nothing. They say an animal's just like his car. Does that mean I'm old and rusty? Well, you said it. What about you? You don't even have a license. That's just it. I'm special and fresh like a spring chicken. No, like a moron. A 912 Van Dillon. For a car put together by monkeys, it was a good one in its time. Hey, monkeys have seriously pushed forward in car manufacturing, Sonny. Cars from the Tongoko Peninsula are the best. Ah, sheep shit. Clawville's the best car producer. Yeah, 30 years ago. Scribbler Tim, second-rate journalist and first-rate ass-kisser. He's a huge fan of the chicken police. Hey, Timbo. My old pal. Hey! Well, hello, boys. W what a lovely welcome. You're not scared to see us, are you? Who? Me? <laughs> what are you thinking? Well, I I'm always glad to see you working. Especially together like this is the legendary chicken police. What the hell's going on here, Tim? That's exactly what I was thinking. You see, what the hell could have happened here, right? Very strange. Indeed. 
Where's Zip, Timbo? Keen observation, boys. Because that's the most exciting thing about the story. Let me guess. A ram and a bobcat appeared and took him with them. Well, uh, you could say that if it happened, but it didn't. Then what? <laughs> Isn't it great? Here's the twist. Start talking, Tim, or we'll have to see if you can really fly. Come on, Sonny. I was supposed to be the bad cop. Shut your beak, Monty. Hey, hey, quit playing tough, will ya? You know I'll help you even if you don't threaten me. I always do. Mostly. Stop babbling. Just answer the question. So, what about Zip? I'm telling you, I don't know. He was already gone by the time I got here. Why are you still sniffing around? Uh, I was uh, trying to make that fellow talk over there. What, the old fly guy? You speak, insect. What if I do? I'm educated, you know. Ah, right, Tim. My patience is gone. It's time you start singing like the songbird you are. Hey, that's seabird. Okay, okay, back off. We're old friends, aren't we? Exactly. That's why I haven't smeared the walls with you yet. Ouch! What do you know about Madame Zavos, Timothy? What's the old hag up to these days? I only know what everybody does. She's rich, she owns a brothel, allegedly she used to be a spy, and she's an enthusiastic supporter of the Crown and the Royalist Party. What else? Well, I haven't heard anything else, I swear. She's surrounded by secrets. She was a spy, you know. Although... Yes? A little bird told me she's been entertaining quite a lot of foreign guests recently. I mean, real high-quality VIP guests. Who? From where? Well, I don't know, but allegedly, she's welcomed patrons from Stavonia, Averia, and even Nautica. Basically from everywhere that matters. And? Well, that's all. You know I can get into everywhere, but even I give the Nile a white berth. Those wild girls are capable of anything protecting the madam. Trust me. Yeah, we've noticed. fly guy. Did he see something? Yeah, maybe he did, but he's not talking. He didn't even speak when the coppers were asking him. And not even when one of them kicked him and the other spat on him. <laughs> Tough fella indeed. Those fuckers. The fly was silent, no matter what. After they left, he just picked up his guitar and started strumming like nothing happened. Poor bastard. If I only knew who they were. Then what? What'll you do? Beat them and spit on them like they did with this fella? They deserve it. Well, that's one thing, Marty, but things don't work that way. Have you seen anything weird around the river? You mean the smoke and burning ship? Exactly. Oh, no, I haven't seen that. Timbo's a douchebag. So it's not hard to draw the truth from him. So what the hell are you doing around here, Timbo? Uh, all right, I confess, but you'll be surprised. I was looking for you, boys. The whole town's talking about you. Really? I'm swelling with pride. Everybody's whispering about the chicken police being back together again. And that you've already turned the whole city upside down. Great news. What else do they say? That you threatened Ibn Wessler's sweetheart, Natasha, then trashed Madame Zavas's brothel. Hard stuff. Really? I'm not surprised. Oh, and the best! You set fire to a ship, too. Yeah, right. Ah, and one more thing. A poor girl was found dead at Natasha's place after you visited there. Is that so? And you believe all that? I'm a journalist, Sonny. It doesn't matter what I believe. 
for us here of all places you offend me sonny i'm your biggest fan i knew the hop dog's gonna be on your list so it was a lucky guess uh something like that and i'm wasting time here often anyway so i had nothing to lose and here we are so you weren't following us by any chance what exactly do you take me for? Let's not get into that, Timbo. So? I wasn't following you at all. This place was my first guess, okay? Or I just wanted to have a good cup of coffee. I mean, who knows? What happened to Zip, Tim? Okay. When I arrived here, the hop dog was already closed. Zip wanted to shoo me away, but I managed to persuade him to talk to me a little. Uh, we're old friends, Sonny, you know? And, uh, I have this personal charm. Yeah, right, the, uh, charm. Get to the point, Timbo. Uh, okay, okay. So, he was totally crazy. I've never seen him like that before. He was flustered, flailing, and talking absolute gibberish. He must have said something, since you're such great friends. He just said he'd go to the only place where there are even bigger scoundrels than those that are after him. Really? I can guess where he meant. I didn't have a clue. Anyway, after he closed the dog behind me, and then the cops came and took him away in handcuffs, I came to the conclusion that all of this makes no sense. Zip, you clever son of a bitch. Why? Who? What is it? Oh, tell me. You just keep your beak out of this, Scribbler. I think I've got an idea about what our little friend's up to. Timbo loves to brag, and it's easy to approach him through his ego. Best if we ruthlessly exploit that. Heard any juicy gossip today, Tim, my friend? Natasha performed your new song tonight. It was a blast, I heard. And a uh, poor little Bambi died. Oh, and a ship was seen burning and sinking on the tides. But you already know that. Not only know it, we even felt it. That all? It could fill a full issue of the Clawville Chronicle. Isn't that enough? It's more than enough, Tim, old pal. As you're so well-informed, Timster, tell me about Madame Zavos. Well, they say she's kind of angry because someone trashed her brothel. Oh, and that someone was allegedly you and Marty. Yeah, you already told us. Good story. Anything else? With a little more truth in it. Allegedly, Ibn Wessler's men were seen around the brothel. I have a hunch that they were the same two guys that came here, too. Gee, that may even be true. Timbo, you pay attention to everything. Did anyone else come here? Besides the coppers? Yeah, a ram and a bobcat, in fact. But you just told us it wasn't them. W wasn't them what? I didn't say they took Zip, because that's not how it happened. Don't make me mad, Tim. We're really not in the mood for this. Hey, I I'm only telling you the truth. They stopped here in a fancy big car, uh, looked around, then left. Zip was no longer here. Neither were the coppers, okay? Tiny Tim is a true fan of ours, and it's time to finally use that to our advantage. your old pals, Tim. What was Zip doing before they took him away? Hey, you're trying to grease me up with all that sweet talk, Sonny Honey. Of course not, Tim Tim. We're old pals. I'm sure we are, but I don't remember you telling me that without an ulterior motive. But you know what? I don't care. Feels good anyway. I'm glad to hear that. 
So Zip was acting crazy. He was running around, knocking over everything and throwing things away. Then he suddenly disappeared into the kitchen. I guess that's when he made the call. Because soon after that, the coppers arrived. And in between? Well, I didn't see him in between. Why didn't you go inside? He's your friend, isn't he? Well, I tried, Sonny. The door was closed. I, I knocked, even yelled. You know how a yelling seagull sounds like. <laughs> but nothing. I think I have a hunch what that was all about. Good for you, Sonny. Zip was hiding something in the dog, right? Uh, what do you mean exactly? Well, you tell me. You're good old friends, aren't you? Well, that's right, Sonny, but Zip's not the kind to easily share his secrets. But now that you put it that way... That's more like it, Tim. Tell me. What do you know? Oh, I don't know what it could be exactly. I mean, maybe it's not even relevant, but I'm sure Zip was trying to get rid of something when I arrived here. What and where? I don't know, okay? I, I already told you too much. If Zip hears about me telling you all this, he's never going to talk to me again. Jim, unless we find Zip, he's not going to talk to anyone ever again. Not in this life, at least. Looking for a headline, even on New Year's Eve? Are you really that desperate? I have to make a living somehow. So, tell me, how come you're working together again? It's not work for us, Tim. It's just pure fun. Walk the city, get ourselves beat up, have a nice swim. And now, we happen to be here, of all places. A nice cup of coffee feels especially good after a little thrashing, you know? You could experience that, too, in the near future. If you can make good coffee, of course. Well, gloomy gods, take it easy, boys. I'll tell you what I know, just ask. If you want to know what happened, give me a good story in exchange. I'll give you a story, all right. You'll be laying eggs from it, you cretin. Oh, okay, okay. Take it easy, Marty. Yeah, take it easy, big bird. Jeez. I'll tell you what you want to know. Thanks, Timbo. I hope we don't have to see you again tonight. I wouldn't bet on that if I were you, gents. Thanks, Timbo. I hope... This sign summarizes the city's current attitude. Look at this mess. Looks like he was in a real hurry, or was trying to erase his tracks. Because he was trying to hide something. But where? And most of all, what? Let's take a good look around. Eat garbage? Yeah, that's more Marty's kind of thing. Ugh, I wouldn't dare touch that. 
what insight? Good question, pal. When we get over this whole mess, I'm gonna take you to a concert. No, you won't. Yes, I will. Swear. Yeah, well, good luck with that. You'll see. Just wait. Even looking at it makes me tired. I think poor Marty just lost the last little bit of his sanity. I think poor Marty just... Greetings, pal. What can I get you? What are you doing, Marty? A nice hot cup of coffee? Maybe some toast? Ooh, our strawberry jam pancake is divine. You must have hit your head pretty bad. Yes, sir. One coffee and a turbo milkshake with extra vanilla and millet powder coming right up. Ah, oh, furry gods, help me. Please don't have a nervous breakdown, okay? Did you find something? Nothing. Or, I mean, there's a lot of stuff here, but nothing important to us. A pity. Whatever that mangy raccoon tried to hide must still be here. Or not. Anything? Still nothing. But I'm starting to like it here. It's like a new job. New life. Well, if this case gets plucked up, you'll find yourself looking for a job, so enjoy it. Ha, 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 ha. Anything? Still nothing, but I'm start. Marty already looked through it. Nothing interesting. A kingdom of dirty dishes and dull knives. And some trash. A kingdom of dirty... Understand what I once this broken down old car was new and shiny. Am I a broken down old car too? Once this broke when all of this is over. You owe me a foot massage. When all of this is over. Please don't eat me, big guy. Hail to you, Lord of all the pancakes. Hail to you. Anything? Still nothing. But I'm start. Timbo, I hope we... Have you seen anything? You mean the smoke in Burke? Exactly. Oh! No. We partly owe him our nickname and our fame, too. I'm not very grateful for that. Ah, is that the... I think so. I'd like to visit the hive again. I don't know if you understand. That's the cobbler did. Ah, is that the chitin blues? When all of this is over. The kingdom of...
Look at this. I'm looking, but what the hell could it be? No idea, Marty. Guess it's best if we ask the owner himself. Where do we find him? Well, Timbo told us he's with even worse bastards than the one chasing him. That's it. The Parliament. No, Marty, but close. Then... No way. Oh, yes, Marty. Zip is at the Clawville City Police Department. Could it be that simple? And that wild? Well, the cops took him. So it's obvious that he called the cops by himself to scare away Westler's henchmen. Timbo was right. Doesn't he know half the police is in Westler's pocket? He probably does, but this was his only chance. Uh, then he really is in big trouble. So? To the PD, then? Well, I haven't got a better idea. Believe me, I'd love to have one. you keep that wristband have you found what you were looking for no Timbo but we wouldn't tell you even if we did ah but you have you are an open book to me Sonny so uh, thanks for the intel be careful what you're writing Timmy boy I'm a cop for only the next 121 days after that I can gut you if I want and get away with it and when did you being a cop stop you? He yeah, has a point. Just keep a low profile, okay, Timster? Okay, okay, I get it. My beak is sealed. 